today I'm going to start doing the headliner in this Mercury. I got the supplies. Now I just need to get it set up. Back when I had my 81 Oldsmobile, the car I traded to get this car, I did the headliner in the way I'm going to do it in this car. It's not going to be factory. It's going to be done in the way that I think it's easier to work on for maintenance. It's going to be modular. It's going to be in sections. going to be a piece here, another one, and another one. Three or four pieces. And they're just going rows. So one piece sags. I don't have to take the whole contraption out. You can just take off the affected piece, repair it, and put it back. So it'll be modular. That's how I did in the Oldsmobile. So I gotta take this off, all this trim off, these mirrors off. I'll leave that on because this, you know, side piece is gonna be a flat panel. I'm just gonna go over. That'll just be the line there, the edge line. I'm gonna keep that there for reference. When I take these off, I'll paint these properly. I just kind of shot them when they're in their place, so it just doesn't look good. So, and I'm not gonna keep that dome light. That's just gonna be gone. I don't even think it even worked when I had it, when I had this thing driving. Yeah, it's gone. The factory headliner in these cars is a stitched material. It's not like that foam board, which is all glued on. Like in the Oldsmobile, this is a stitched style. You can see the material. You know, it's good stuff. It doesn't sag, but it does curl and fall apart when it deteriorates. So nothing is perfect, but this style does last better than the other styles where it's glued on fabric on foam board. I'm going to kind of copy that method. I got fiberglass board. I'm going to like bolt on, bolt uh, to these inner supports. And on the fiberglass board will be the fabric, but it won't be any foam, it'll just be glued on. It'll look good when it's all done. So I'm going to start dismantling all this and getting it all ready. Well, I crawled my way into the back. Yeah, yeah look at that bright light. Okay. Now, I couldn't really get the A-pillars done. See, I can get that searchlight thing going on here. There's a little screw on the bottom corner of that A pillar. Same on that side too. They both don't want to come out. So I'm going to have to cut around it and just abandon that screw. So I haven't got my Dremel tool yet. I'm just going to, these will be the last pieces. Because everything else is coming out. That's off. This is all coming out. And I gotta say, one more thing Ford did right compared to GM. When I was working on my blue Oldsmobile, because I did the headliner in the same way, taking the trim piece that goes in this area on the Oldsmobile, there are bot, there are clips that hold it in, and they're they're in such a way you need like surgical tools to get at them. It's bullshit. Or in this car, you just use a screw, and it's just there. It doesn't require as much finesse. So this is one more thing Ford did right. You know, there's certain things that GM should follow that Ford did, but there's some things that Ford should copy what GM did. So they both have their strengths and weaknesses. And for inner trim pieces around the window, Ford beats GM in that market because it's really easy to take off, aside from the A-pillars. So... Got my Napa brand $20 screwdriver because the one I used got chowdered out after the third screw. It just rounded off. Ah, so I get that piece out, bottom pieces, and take that out and paint them. Then we'll proceed to getting this all dressed up and looking nice. Well, I'm sitting here now. I got all the trim off, aside for these two. 
Just gonna procrastinate on that part. That screw right there just does not want to come out, but I can cut around it. That and everything else can hold it in place, so it's not a big deal. But I got everything else taken care of. Now, as for these, uh, how I'm going to keep this headliner in place, I'm going to anchor a piece of material onto this rib and to that rib. I haven't decided how I'm going to do the front all the way to the back yet, but I know the main two pieces will have something on it, and that's going to be this stuff. Found it at Home Depot. Not sure what it is, but it's just a long, flat, bendable strip of plastic. Metal would have worked, but plastic's just fine. And to my luck, this just happens to slide right over this rib. Like that. It's almost like I already knew this was going to happen. And literally, it's like it's made for this. It just fits right over it. holding in place but it's just gonna arch around and I'm gonna follow that pattern with this one and then I got something to attach the fiberglass board and bridge it over in modular pieces just gotta cut this to fit and sheet metal screw it in so there's that Got that trim piece cut up. Had to uh, cut off the edges to make it a little more bendable. Use whatever fits the best and give her some shit. stuff to bring in. Get that drill. Now the trim piece. Honestly, I was just looking for something that, that would make kind of work. Anything flat and rigid is what I would go for if this is metal, but either way, it fits perfectly. So I'm going this route. Sheet metal, screw it on. Just slides on there like it was made for it. And it comes with these holes, so I can just go right at it. I can go right, at, go right to town. This is going to be a two-hander, probably a four-hander, who the fuck knows. I'll get back to when this is all secured. Just to illustrate how well this just fits in place, it's just arched in there under its own tension. Never mind the gap there. It's just resting in place. Sheet metal screws will make it fit. Just imagine this here, there, worry about the back and the front. And then we'll attach the fiberglass sheets, you know, section by section. And they'll meet up in the middle. It'll look all hunky dory. Now it's just a matter of figuring out what size uh, screw to use. I don't want this going through the damn roof. And we all be all set to go. Now I'm at the point of cutting material. This is what I'm talking about here. This is what I'm using for the uh, headliner. It's got a fiberglass board, 4x8 sheet. Really bendable. I'm using this to make a straight line, but it's going to be 18 and a half inches on this side, 55 inches wide, 
by 19 inches on this side. The way I measured it is this is going to go on top of this. This is just acting like a structure support. Going right in between. That's where I measured it. So if this were underneath the car, the driver's side, from here to the other support, this would be 18 and a half. Gets an inch and a half wider on this side to the passenger side, 19 inches. I went 55 for the width. Maybe a little bit shorter. It's better to go over than under. And I can just trim the fit. And this stuff is pretty easy to cut. I just usually use these tin snips. And I'll have at her. Well, this is where I'm at now. It's just under tension right now. Arched, at, you know, tension. Kind of what I'm thinking about how this is all being pieced together. I'm just gonna drill sheet metal screws where these holes are. And that'll hold it in place. The reason why I had to put this first so it gives us a flat surface to go on to. Because without it, it's just all Oh, it's got a lot of hills and valleys. At least this is flat. Just keep this uniform. So I'm going to start getting this thing uh, fitted up. And when I get it all screwed in, I'll unscrew it out, clean it up, paint it, and then I'll put fabric over it. Well, the first piece is pretty much done. So to do the sides, the middle, and leave it at that. Give it a metal curve to the sides. It's not gonna like get in the way or anything. Because the edges, they differ when you uh, get close. I press, I press it in closer to the front side of the car and it does that. That's what I'm talking about. The sharper the curve, the more this distorts. So I'm just going to let it hang easy on the sides and just do just three. That, that's pretty much good enough. This one's ready to go. I imagine I want to put fabric over there. It's going to fill a gap even more. And I got all this to do as well. Do the back piece and the front. Before I paint and put fabric on. I'm just going to get all the pieces to fit first. And then it's just a matter of assembling it all. It's just when I take all this out, the screws are going to go through the fabric as well, but you don't want to screw into fabric because I'll catch it and just twist it apart. So I'm going to elongate the hole or widen it with a step drill bit. Now i got washers that can go over this, so lining up the holes will be easy. And it just, it's just going to bite into the inner rib here. And the wash is just going to hold this and that into place. Well, the inner metal rib, this, that's where this is going to bite into. I want to do Velcro, and it would be a lot easier, but the only drawback to Velcro is adhesive attached, so it's going to last as long as the adhesive lasts, which ironically is how... The headliners fall apart in the other cars because how long does that hold up to the adhesive and when it falls apart it sags. At least this is just mechanically connected. So off to the next piece, however many it's going to need.